They are voting to allow excessive government spending and deficits to continue for another two years, making the problem much worse. And they're calling that acting fiscally responsible. In today's video, Peter Schiff, founder, CEO and global strategist of Euro-Pacific Capital, gives a warning that the 2008 crisis was just the prelude to a larger sovereign debt crisis in the United States that may lead to a collapse of the U.S. dollar. The most important thing I want to discuss is what's happening right now live. In fact, I was watching on YouTube the floor of the House of Representatives where they are getting ready to vote to raise the debt ceiling. In fact, they're not actually raising the debt ceiling because these cowards don't have the courage to raise the debt ceiling. They're just suspending it. Now they've done that before. This isn't the first time they used that, you know, that trick. But the reason they don't want to vote to raise the debt ceiling is because the number would be so huge. In fact, in order to get through the next two years, which is when the suspension uh, is good for it takes us through the next election. So the uh, suspension will uh, run out during a lame duck session of Congress after we already have the results of the 2024 uh, election. But if they actually wanted to raise the ceiling by a large enough amount to get us through to that time, I think they need like a five trillion dollar increase in the national debt that's how big the budget deficits are nobody wants to vote for that can you imagine having to explain why you voted for the biggest increase in the national debt in history so rather than doing that they just vote to suspend the ceiling and they never have to have the embarrassment of actually voting for a five trillion dollar increase now if you look at the 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 projections for the budget they're only projecting about four trillion dollars of debt over the next two years which would still be a record but there's no chance those projections are going to be accurate because they're based on unrealistically rosy economic assumptions if you have a more realistic set of assumptions that it's likely to be closer to five trillion if not more than five trillion and that's why i came up with that number but you know the only thing that's i think more frustrating or more comical or ridiculous than the fact that they're raising the debt ceiling is what they named the bill that is going to raise the debt ceiling i've talked about this on this podcast for years about how legislation often has a name of the opposite of what the legislation itself accomplishes, right? And, you know, it's it's very uh, hypocritical of Congress to go after the private sector, right? They don't like it when pharmaceutical companies or, uh, you know, cable companies or you name it, uh, they're always policing their advertising. We can't have any false advertising. Well, the biggest false advertising is in the naming of bills that pass the Congress and get signed by the president. Because again, the bills accomplish the opposite of what they're titled. Because most Americans don't read these bills. So when the congressmen want to go back to campaign, they want to talk about what they voted for. So they pass a bill that raises taxes and they call it tax simplification. Because, you know, everybody's in favor of tax simplification so it's easy to vote for the tax simplification bill you don't want to vote for the tax hike bill right they did the same thing with the patriot act right the most unpatriotic piece of legislation ever passed and they titled that the patriot act right nobody wants to vote for the anti-patriot act no they want to be patriotic so they mislabel the um the legislation that's what they did with the inflation reduction act the Inflation Reduction Act had nothing to do with it reducing inflation. All it did was increase inflation. But no congressman wants to come home to their constituents and defend a vote for the Inflation uh, um, Acceleration Act. No, they want to say, I voted for the Inflation Reduction Act, even if the act itself increased inflation that you're pretending you reduced. Well, this title 
you know, trumps of all. <laughs> the title of this bill is the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. I'm not making this up. The Fiscal Responsibility Act. So they are voting for the biggest increase in the national debt ceiling in history. They are voting to allow excessive government spending and deficits to continue for another two years, making the problem much worse. And they're calling that acting fiscally responsible. The only fiscally responsible thing to do is to vote against this bill. But only a handful of Republicans are going to do that. Now, there's actually going to be some Democrats voting against it, too, for opposite reasons. See, the Democrats don't care about the debt. They don't like some of these, you know, trivial spending cuts. Like there is some, I think, minimal increase in the work requirements in order to get uh, Medicare, uh, not Medicare, food stamps. And they're talking about these cuts to government spending. You know, the Republicans are out there bragging, the ones who are voting for this monstrosity. They're claiming this is some kind of significant milestone for conservatives. We finally are tackling government spending and deficits. They're not tackling anything. The deficits go way up. Even if you believe the press, they only claim about one and a half trillion of deficit reduction over 10 years. That means 150 billion a year. But even those cuts don't actually happen until the later years. And none of them are actually going to happen because, again, they're all based on overly optimistic economic assumptions. No inflation, low interest rates, low unemployment, no recessions. I mean, everything is perfect in order to get these so-called reductions in the deficit. But again, the cuts that they're talking about are reductions in the rate of increase, not real cuts, and they only affect a tiny part of the budget. None of the uh, big ticket items are, items are there. I mean, national defense actually increases, and they admit that. Uh, there are increases that are automatically built in, to Social Security, Medicare, right? Th those are off the table. Interest on the national debt is exploding. So all the big stuff is exempted. I mean, they're only talking about trivial, non-existent cuts in what amounts to a tiny part of the budget. I mean, even if we got 1.5 trillion in spending cuts or, or 1.5 trillion in deficit reduction, right? That's what they're talking about. Not 1.5 trillion in spending cuts, but deficit reduction. Even if we got that, that's only about 5% or less than 5% of the deficits that they're projecting over the next 10 years. And of course their projections are too low, but even if you accept their projections and you accept their ridiculous assumptions you're still talking about the deficits over the next 10 years being five percent less than they would be if they didn't make the cuts but they're already enormous in fact when they're talking about freezing government spending they forget how much government spending increased since COVID. how are you going to freeze spending at these bloated levels you have to reverse spending you have to make real substantive cuts to government spending in order to do anything about the problem. But this bill does nothing. And unfortunately, this is exactly what I said was gonna happen from day one. I knew that at the end of the day, all of the you know chest pounding uh, was gonna mean nothing. We weren't going to default on the debt. We were gonna raise the debt ceiling just like we've done every single time we hit it. And yes, we were gonna do it in a way where Congress can lie about it, where the Republicans can pretend they've actually done something because we had this big fight and now they wanna pretend that we actually got something as a result of this big fight, they got nothing. You know, maybe the Republicans are responsible for the name, the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Now, now they can go back home and tell their conservative constituents how they voted for the Fiscal Responsibility Act because they're responsible when in fact there's no responsibility whatsoever in this act. It is the height of irresponsibility. And again, it's exactly what I predicted would happen. And you know, when I'm watching uh, the congressmen talk about this on the floor before they get ready to cast their votes, and we know it's gonna pass uh, because they already passed some amendment to bring it to the floor. And the fact that they were able to get the votes for that, well, this is you know gonna happen. It's, it's, it's basically a sure thing. but. To hear the Democrats talking, the real crisis is the debt ceiling. 
A lot of these guys are saying we need to eliminate the debt ceiling so that we don't have a crisis. And they're talking about all of the problems that American families would be struggling with if we didn't raise the debt ceiling because we might have to default. And they're talking about how a default would hurt American families because you know it would increase the interest rates on their car loans or their mortgages because it would you know diminish the, the credit rating of the US government and so interest rates would rise. But what these Democrats completely overlook is the impact of the deficits on American families. Somehow they think the deficits have no impact it's just the limit on the deficits that has an impact. No. Who do the Democrats think are on the hook to repay all these deficits? It's the American families that they're pretending to care about. Interest rates are going to be much higher in the future because of these deficits. Inflation is going to be much higher in the future because of these deficits. If you really care about the American family, then stop burdening them with the responsibility to repay all these deficits, either through taxes or inflation. If you care about the American family, you will not raise the debt ceiling because that means you're saying, American families, we're not going to burden you with any more debt. The debt that you have right now is it. We're going to stop here and we're going to try to reduce the burden of debt. No, what the Democrats say is we want to get rid of the debt ceiling so there's no limit to how much debt we can pile on the back of the American family and obligate them to repay either through uh, taxation or, or inflation. But again, it's not just the Democrats I want to criticize for blaming the problem on the ceiling. I want to criticize the Republicans for, play, for claiming they've done something about it, for claiming they've actually won a hard... Uh, fought victory on behalf of the taxpayer, on behalf of the American public, when they've sold out the American public and the taxpayer. This deal is a complete farce. Everything from the name of the deal to, what it, to what's inside it is a fraud on the American public. In fact, I would not vote to reelect anybody who voted for this, including any Republican who voted for this. Uh, they should not be sent back to office. What is the point? You might as well send a Democrat there. I think the only ones worthy of re-election are the ones who opposed it because those are the only ones who might make a difference in the future. And you know, if this is all we can get, if you've got these Republicans talking about how this is this great accomplishment and they've accomplished nothing, well, clearly they're never gonna do anything. And that doesn't mean that we're not gonna have a crisis. We're gonna have a crisis, but not because we didn't raise the debt ceiling, but because we did, because the crisis that's coming is the debt crisis. That is the problem, and it's going to lead to a currency crisis, massive inflation. The American families are going to pay through the nose because of what Congress has been doing, including the most recent bill, this Fiscal Responsibility Act, that is about to pass uh, the House, and then we'll go on to the Senate and eventually to Biden's deaths for signature 